Hi, this is 365801 and this is day 3 of the 25 days of manga. Now I know I said I was only going to be reading things that I really wanted to read and today's title I really wanted to read since I bought it a few months ago. Um, but in what way that it actually corresponds to any of the squares on the bingo board, I was unsure. I thought I'll just read it and see. So in terms of what it could signify, I first of all thought, oh well it's definitely a cosy sweater. There's a lot of um, black turtlenecks being worn in this story. Um, there is also gift giving and there was actually a whole section where like a mini chapter was dedicated to Christmas time so there was also a Christmas tree, uh, Christmas presents and that kind of thing. So I think I'm gonna have to say this uh, falls under the Christmas tree. I think that might be a safe bet to go for just in terms of what I might be reading in the future. Gift giving could be a birthday or something like that so I think that's a safe bet. And cosy sweater I might come across again. Um, it's definitely not mistletoe worthy first kiss that's for sure because um, when they kiss they just get straight onto it and they just get down and dirty on the floor there and then. So yeah <laughs> Christmas tree it is I'm gonna go with. Now the title I want to talk about today is Yamada Yugi's No One Loves Me. In Japanese this would be Dare ni wo ai sarenai. Um, I love Yamada Yugi. She just writes such wonderful stories. I have said it already but the way she writes her characters and their dialogue it always feels like I'm watching a 1940s Hollywood movie. Um, they really have interesting uh, personalities. They feel really real as characters. They feel like real people. So um, I was so, so excited to get this one this year. No One Loves Me. It's usually quite expensive, around 30 to 40 pounds. And um, I managed to get it for, I think it was between 10 and 12. I think it was about 12 pounds. And it is thick. Double C. I really do think that um, it might have possibly originally been um, planned as two separate volumes because there are two stories uh, included in this one single volume um, but the second story is just ever so slightly shorter and so I really do think it probably could have been separated into two maybe just a slight padding out it's around 300 pages long so for a single volume it is very good um, value in terms of the page count. Now the story is focused around um, Katsuhiro who runs a second-hand bookshop and has been asked to translate a book from Czech into Japanese um, by his old college, um, I wouldn't say friend, all old college mate <laughs> uh, Masafumi or Ijima I think his name is, Ijima-san, and um, Katsuhiro uh, is kind of antisocial, he is very cold, um, he doesn't um, get on very well with people, he's very short and blunt with the way he speaks and so he does tend to make enemies especially when it comes to men. Um, women tend to love him though um, and that's why Masafumi and Katsuhiro ended up not getting along during college. Uh, there was a bit of an issue with a woman. Um, but Katsuhiro never did anything wrong, he just was a bit blunt about things. So uh, it turns out that um, Masuhumi works for a publishing house and they need the book to be published so he has to interact with Katsuhiro and the two of them end up getting on um, slowly better and better or worse and worse, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, Ma Masafumi just ends up getting more worked up um, and he doesn't really understand why. But we all understand why. We know why. We know why it is. Um, yeah, so it's just one of these really quiet, slow moving, like what actually happens? If I have to tell you, like nothing happens. <laughs> nothing happens in the story. Other than a beautiful love develops <laughs> and it's really sweet and it's also very hot and steamy. This is 18 plus, does have the parental guidance note on it so you know, B 
be careful if that's not your thing. This is my thing. Um, I absolutely love the way that Yamada Yugi writes relationships and how they interact with each other and how they develop and how they just become a thing. And then even after they're uh, a couple, they still have a really great little interactions. I really love their dialogues. Um, yeah, so the first story, which takes up the majority of the, the book, is just a really sweet, lovely one about uh, lots to do with publishing and books. And it ma mainly just takes place within the secondhand bookshop. It kind of feels like it's a play. Like, this could definitely be set on the stage, and I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> now, on to the second story in this book, and that involves Tetsuchi, which um, is another character who has a connection with Katsuhiro because they both lived in the Czech Republic and studied abroad there, learning Czech for some reason, um, together. So they were roommates and also another gentleman called uh, Ueno Jinya, Jinya, yes, um, who comes into the bookstore. Now because Katsuhiro is a little bit odd, um, Tetsuchi is really only his, like, only true friend, someone from his past. Um, and the three of them, along with Masumi, get on quite well. Uh, but because Katsuhiro is doing translation work for both of them, because Tetsuchi also works for a publishing company, they're all very, like, it's all book related. Um, so they all, always end up having to look after his secondhand bookstore while he's in the back translating for them. Literally, they just sit there <laughs> cleaning books and stuff, even though they work for a publishing company. Um, it seems like such a fantastic life. This is the life I want to live. Anyway, so a young man comes in, and that is Jinya, and he is looking for a particular kind of book, and they say, oh, we don't have that just now. Come in every once in a while, and we'll, we'll, we'll call you if um, we ever get one. And so he comes in quite a lot, Especially when Tetsuchi is there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the two of them end up becoming quite good friends. There's a slight misunderstanding, of course, as there usually is in these stories. But I won't tell you what the misunderstanding is and what actually happens. Tetsuchi kind of goes... Tetsuchi, he goes through a bit of a journey in this um, second story. He starts off, you know thinking of himself in a certain way and by the end of it he comes to uh, a realization that he didn't truly know himself and he feels like he's moved on from his adolescence um it's really nice actually jinya is just like the sweetest little thing as well who had a bit of issues with um uh, a f another friend so it's all very complicated there's lots of like misunderstandings and um, arguments and they're all really fun so this story has a lot more going on and I don't want to spoil it for anyone who does want to read it um, but I really enjoyed it as usual it's Yamada Yugi who I love 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 um, and I was so 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 happy to get a copy of this so I'm really glad that I was able to sit down and read it and it is thick. There is a lot to it. And I mean, it's worth getting. There is one big thing that I want to say. That is, that is this is one of uh, <clears throat> June Manga's later publications. I want to check exactly. I think it is 2010. Yeah, so this is November 2010. So this is quite near the um, end of 2010. And at this point in time, I have to say... <sighs> The quality of the actual book itself is very nice. This one that I've got looks like no one's ever actually ever read it. It's brand spanking new. The paper's good, the binding's good, all of that's great. There is one huge failing in this book, and that is they obviously could not afford a proofreader or quality checker for this. I am absolutely appalled at the number of errors that I found in this. I stopped counting when I got to seven or eight in the first story. <laughs> this, I mean, in the second story, I was like, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. I mean, really, was anyone working there? I feel sorry for the translator and the letterer and everyone else 
they obviously did not have a proofreader. If they, if if there was a proofreader, they, I, mean, I have nothing to say to you that is appalling. It is terrible that there was that many errors in this book, because this is a wonderful story and Yamada Yugi is an amazing mangaka, and it deserved to have someone read through this before they printed it, because it would have taken, you know, maybe an hour. For someone to just go through it and go, check, 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 change, 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 change. And there it is, done. I mean, seriously, minimum wage <laughs> for one hour's work and it would have been so fantastic. So that's a really, uh, a really big issue for me that, that Yamada Yugi has been done wrong in that respect. She deserves so much more. <clears throat> So yeah, June Manga, mm, maybe, you know, make sure that you're having some proofreaders. That would be good. And that kind of takes on the element of sometimes in manga publication, the quality drops somewhat. It's such a shame because I love this book and I still recommend it, even though that's an issue. I so recommend it. So yeah, this I think is going to go for my Christmas tree. Um... Yeah, I wonder what I'm going to read next. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, and of course, yeah, every day is a VL day. I totally forgot that. <laughs> Bye.